Lesson 4, Summary, Energy and Sources of Electricity. This is a note from your instructor, Jerome Barnes, read by Hector Bello. All electrical circuits will convert current flow into some form of energy, such as light, heat, or mechanical energy, like motors. In order to properly accomplish these conversions, we must know the power requirements. With the known power factor, we can calculate conductor and fuse size. We will start with work concept in figure 4.1, which is the force applied over a distance and expressed in foot pounds or inch pounds. The formula for work is F, which represents force in pounds, times D, which represents distance. You can calculate the work done by an airplane by using the equation W equals F times D, or work equals force times distance. For instance, in a model airplane, if a model air airplane exerts 0.25 foot pounds over a distance of 10 meters, the formula below would be used to determine the work done by the airplane. See figure 4.2, uh, which shows the reason which shows the relationship between work, energy, and power. Work refers to activity involving a force and movement in the direction of the force. A force of 20 newtons pushing an object feet 5 meters in the direction of the force does 100 joules of work. Energy is the capacity for work, for doing work. You must have energy to accomplish work. It is like the currency for performing work. To do 100 joules of work, you must expend 100 joules of energy. Power is the rate of doing work, or the rate of using energy, which are numerically the same. If you do 100 joules of work in one second, Using 100 joules of energy, the power is 100 watts. The concept of power is the amount of work done over time over a time period which is expressed in seconds, minutes, or hours. The formula for power is force times distance divided time. If you are referring to mechanical power, you will use horsepower, like figure 4.3. All electrical motors are rated in horsepower. One horsepower is equal to 550 foot-pounds per second or 33,000 pounds per minute. In the world of electronics, power is measured in watts. The formula for power is P equals E times I or power equals voltage times current. Remember that every 746 watts equals to one horsepower. When you're solving any equation, as long as you have two quantities, the third unknown can be found. Here's an important formula, wheel, to help you throughout your electronics career, figure 4.4. Please refer to the sample problems in the textbook to help you become more familiar with solving for the unknown values. Fundamentals, electric laws, formulary equations. In order to read instantaneous power, we use a watt meter, figure 4.5, which is similar to the darson ball type we discussed in a previous lesson, except it uses coils from an electrical magnet. It is called a an electrodynamometer movement. Now, if you were going to read the amount of power used over a period of time, you will use a watt o watt hour meter, which are found on most power distribution stations or your home. Figure four point six. They're usually 
they usually read in kilowatts per hour and uses field coils in series in li with line, current, and voltage. Read this meter from left to right in order for the second meter to show an indication. You read this meter from left to right. In order for the second meter to show an indication, the first meter has to make a complete turn. And in order for the third meter to show an indication, the second meter must make a complete turn. This concept also applies to the fourth and fifth meter. The power you put in must be measured by the power you take out. And this is called efficiency or electrical power ratio. The formula is percent equals power out divided power in times 100. Efficiency of electrical power is so important because the more efficient it is, the lower the cost. When you get in the field, you will understand the meaning of cutting cost, which is essential across the board. I am not going to cover the gears and pulleys for this course, but understand that gears and pulleys will provide you with a means to manipulate RPM or revolutions per minute, torque or force work without variations to the horsepower. With an understanding of power behind this, we can concentrate on the sources of power of electricity. There are many ways to create electrical power, such as heat, batteries, which is chemical reaction, light, mechanical, pressure, fuel cells, or chemical reaction again. Magneto hydrodynamic power or friction and magnetism, which is the basis for generators. The most familiar source of voltage is the battery, seen in figure 4.7. A battery takes two similar elements, zinc and carbon to produce chemi a chemical reaction which produces DC voltage, figure 4.8. The, the, conver the conversion of chemical reaction in a battery is achieved by the voltaic. The cells create positive and negative ions and cause potential a potential difference between the electrodes which develops voltage there are primarily two types of battery cells. One is the primary, which is non-rechargeable, figure 4.9. And then there is a secondary cell, which is rechargeable, figure 4.10. The cells of batteries have charged greatly over the years. The cells of batteries have changed greatly over the years, from dry cell to mercury cell, just to name a few. But the purpose and operation of the battery has not changed. All batteries contain acid and water, or what is known as electrolytes. It is imperative when you are mixing acid with water that you always pour the acid into the water so it does not splash back and burn you. Batteries will have a negative and positive post, and they are rated according to their voltage and capacity requirements. Capacity is the current a battery will produce over a period of time and is measured in ampere hours. Capacity of a battery really applies when you're talking about a car battery because of the need for starting amps. Batteries come in all shapes and sizes and can be used for large equipment like cars to some of the smallest like a pen light. Batteries give off voltage therefore they can either be wired up in series or in parallel. In series, there's one path for current to flow and they are wired from negative to positive to increase voltage output, such as in figure 4.11. In parallel, all the positive cells are connected together and all of the negative cells are connected together to give a decreased voltage output but an increased battery life. Because batteries contain acid, the handling and disposal must be followed according to the cert to certain guidelines. The MSDS or material safety data sheets provide you with all of the pertinent information on how to handle hazardous material. 
from storage to harmful effects this form will will be provided by the manufacturer as an electronics technician you will mostly be, encounter small batteries used to on circuit cards which may control some type of indicator lights on a PLC programmable logic controllers and in almost all of your test equipment although batteries are the most familiar and common source of electricity they are not the only source electrical energy can be generated from light through the use of, photo, of, of a photovoltaic or photocell a photovoltaic cell uses silicon injection into a material to create a negative and positive semiconductor material and when exposed to sunlight electricity is created I only mentioned the photocells to give you a brief understanding before I moved on to the next topic because you will not work on photocells the photoelectric controls are much more relevant to your study of electronics the control is a light sensitive resistor used to control current in electronic circuits which is known as a photoresistive cell figure 4.13 shows an electric an electronic diagram using a photosensitive resistor and a photosensitive and a photosensitive resistor you will find this used uh, on a lot of outside lights once the sun goes down or the photosensitive resistor senses darkness it will close a relay of some type to allow current to run to the light electrical energy can be created by heat if you put two different metals together and heat them the heat is then controlled and indicated by a thermal couple you will find this configuration in radios and recording equipment electrical energy can be obtained from mechanical pressure by applying force to a crystal and causing distortion therefore creating voltage this is known as piezoelectric effect the last three ways to create electrical energy are fuel cells which are similar to batteries magnetohydrodynamic power generation which is ionized gas passing through a magnetic field it uses two plates to collect the gas those plates are called cathode negative and anode positive those two terms are associated with polarity throughout electronics the easiest way to remember them is to think of letters of the alphabet a comes before C so a is positive and C is negative magnetism which is a generator converts the mechanical energy to electrical energy we will discuss generators later on because most electrical energy is produced from generators they are also widely used as a backup power distribution throughout the world they contain a multitude of electronic components that you will have to become familiar with and repair this is the end of the review for chapter 4